Hello, I'm Todd Berner, and I'm on the Android Developer Relations team here at Google, and I focus on security. The motivation of these next few minutes is to help clarify a concept that's becoming more and more essential to modern app security, attestation. The truth is that Android's basic frameworks provide a deep level of security for your app. But there's likely cases in your app where it interacts with sensitive data or your backend that you need to be sure that you're talking to the device and user you think you are. The word exploit means dramatically different things when we consider different types of apps. Exploits generally fall into two categories. An outside entity attempting to attack your app and harm your users, or sometimes it's individuals who are acting in bad faith when interacting with your application. If you're a game developer, maybe it means someone cheating to get the highest possible score, or maybe even impossible score. For streaming apps, it might mean piracy. If you're a financial app, it could be effects to your customers' bank accounts, or if you're an enterprise yourself, it could be access to your systems. As Android security has increased, attackers are looking for new ways to compromise the device. And while we as developers build and test our apps and continue to fix any sorts of issues we see in the field, there are still things we cannot control. In fact, your app isn't always your app. Many apps depend on only a properly structured request against their backend to access information. And this means a repackaged version of your app could allow a user to make requests that you aren't inspecting. This could enable users to take actions like updating their high score in a game or breaking any other client level logic or validation that you might have put in place. In this chart, it shows that while the back end is seeing a request that looks the same, it's actually run from all three, a genuine GMS Android device, an Android emulator, and even a Python script. When you form an API request, it all comes to the app or game server looking identical. While this might seem OK, this could allow nefarious actors to access the APIs when they shouldn't be able to. This could mean your entire client-side validation might not serve as any protection. In addition, your app isn't alone. Your app runs on a device with many other apps, with an operating system, with a user. How do you know you can trust each of these? A user's device could be vulnerable because of not having the most recent security patches, or they could be running Android within a container to control other elements of the environment. Instead of asking, do I trust my app, or do I trust this request against my backend, trust in your app is more complicated. You must ask, do I trust each and every part of this picture? The firmware, the OS, the application, the device, and the user. We call this layers of trust. As an app developer, this might be daunting. It looks like you need to keep track of whether or not you can trust each firmware, each OS, each device, and even each chip on each device. Apps might be where the users and developers interact, but if we don't consider these other interactions, we leave ourselves vulnerable to various possibilities for exploit. Device attestation allows developers to learn about the security of devices' current environment. It should be used each time a device requests access to potentially sensitive information. The attestation response helps developers decide how risky it would be to access the information. Within Android, the key attestation API is an anti-abuse API that allows developers to assess the Android device their app is running on. The API should be used as part of your abuse detection system to help determine whether your servers are interacting with your genuine app running on a genuine Android device. You should think of this as a full description of the environment that your app that you can, is running in that you can see before you allow the user to take action. This helps developers assess the boot time integrity specifically and determine if the Android security model is being enforced as inspected based on the boot time properties of the attestation report. It helps answer questions like, is the correct version of my application running on the device? Did the device boot into genuine software? If I'm using encryption keys, where are they stored? You can then take this information and decide whether or not to let the user take action. From there, you take action to allow or block the user from taking action based on the return information. The functionality of a test station itself will not make the decision for you. It's crucial for you to think of the impact of allowing users to take action and what the alternative is. Not all devices will have the most recent security patch 
or you might not support advanced features like Strongbox. And you as the developer must decide how to navigate based on the responses and the nature of the access the user is requesting. AOSP provides the building blocks to implement a system of attestation through a functionality called key attestation. This provides a response with all non-privacy compromising boot time integrity information that could be relevant to Android developers. Google Play has built on top of this to help developers detest, detect risky interactions through a tool called Play Integrity API to prevent abuse and attacks. Key attestation is a technology that's built into AOSP, and it provides a way to strongly determine if an asymmetric key pair is hardware backed. It shows the boot time properties of the device at the time the key was created, the properties of the key, and what constraints are applied to its usage. While it was built for the general case of binding attestation to hardware and firmware signals, its use case as an integrity monitor makes it a great foundation for the Play Integrity API to build on top of. It returns almost 50 pieces of information in its schema and surfaces detailed information and includes attestation information on the newest security features. An example is seeing if it is being run in software, hardware on the device, or a certified vault called the strong box. This might make you feel like you're super powered as a developer, knowing exactly what's going on on a user's device. This information might seem essential to you as you want the utmost security for your app, but you run into the question of what decisions should be made based on the information. How large of a decision tree are you going to implement? As you can imagine, the complexity becomes quite extreme. Google has offered a more simple way than key attestation for Android. Google released SafetyNet Attestation API for Android apps in 2016. It specifically checks whether a device is a certified device that passes the compatibility testing suite, whether it's rooted, or if the device doesn't register due to factors such as a protocol emulating script. Our discussion today is well-timed because new apps can no longer use SafetyNet for attestation. And SafetyNet will be fully sunset in the near future and is being replaced by the Play Integrity API. The best option for attestation in Android is the Play Integrity API. When your app or game is used on a device that runs Android 4.4 API level 19 or higher, the Play Integrity API provides a signed and encrypted response that checks the environment for the following information. Genuine app binary, determining whether you're interacting with an unmodified binary that Google Play recognizes. Genuine play install, showing whether the current user account is licensed, which means that the user installed the app through Google Play. And genuine Android device, detailing if your app is running on a genuine Android device powered by Google Play services. Play Integrity API returns approximately five values, two of which lead to clearly understandable decisions. App integrity is powered entirely by Google Play and checks if the app is recognized and the certificate matches Google Play's records. It can have results of play recognized, unrecognized version, or unevaluated. Play Integrity API also has a device integrity verdict related to attestation. Here you can see the device integrity result is meets attestation, meets device integrity, meaning the app is running on an Android device powered by Google Play services. The device passes system integrity checks and meets Android compatibility requirements. If you opt in, you can also see meets strong integrity, which is powered by key attestation directly. This means the app is running on an Android device powered by Google Play services and has a strong guarantee of system integrity, such as hardware back proof of boot integrity. The device also passes system integrity checks and meets Android's compatibility requirements. Other possible results for emulators or unlocked devices are meets basic integrity or meets virtual integrity. Play Integrity's API simplifies the response, and this allows you as the developer to focus on your larger responsibility of preventing access to your service based on the results. You can see whether the app is being run on a device that is the same version of the app that's available on Play, and you can also confirm that the device is a real Android device. From this information, you might decrease service performance, add a reCAPTCHA, or entirely block a user from your service or app. The work to handle the response is essential, and because your team will need to take this on, it's important to simplify. And in our view, the best way is taking the verdict-driven Play Integrity API responses and make decisions in your app from there. We recommend implementing Play Integrity API 
rather than key attestation directly because implementing attestation is only half the battle. While it might also be nice if you could simply block all the devices that don't pass every part of every check from using your app entirely, it's actually better to identify where in your app device security is essential and find ways to implement the API and handle the responses in those locations. Thinking about how to handle responses is essential, but it's hard unless you put it into the context of your app. To help, let's explore how device attestation provides insights into two problem sets that many apps face, access and trust. Many apps service front ends, and they heavily depend on authentication to provide access to a sensitive data on a web-based backend. When accessing data, the users of the app might provide the right username and password, or might even have the right certificate installed on their device. But we can't make assumptions about the rest of the device environment. Otherwise, we leave ourselves open to several other methods of exploit. The earliest adopters of mobile device attestation were enterprises requiring certain device standards for compliance or information security, especially when their, their employees bring their own devices. By using attestation, the enterprise's IT department gets to decide what conditions a device must pass before access is granted. We've seen adoption in financial apps as well. These apps check if their servers are interacting with a genuine app running on a genuine Android device, ensuring a more predict predictable environment. This makes it more difficult for a hacker to use a clone or substitute app to connect to the financial institution's servers. As apps get larger and more popular, they become exposed to users who try to exploit their apps or services. For example, we've all tried to investigate a bug report or strange server interaction, only to find it was due to a rooted device. Because you can't always trust the rules you've created in your code, you also need to verify that you trust the user themselves. Attestation provides an easy way to get context, and we've seen it used to ensure trust in many ways. In games, it's commonly used as part of anti-cheat software to detect possible cheats and vulnerabilities within the device's memory and processes. Attestation gives messaging apps additional security as it can prevent third-party use of your APIs trying to pose as a fake app. In this case, attestation is used to ensure the device passes Google's compatibility and integrity checks, and any device that fails is prevented from logging in. Users can try and get around your monetization as well. And streaming apps frequently respond to attestation failure by falling back to lower quality to reduce abuse of their expensive services. Any app that deals with payment portals, collects sensitive information, or needs a secure connection to servers should consider using attestation to assess the Android device requesting or sending the information. The use cases we just discussed could all be solved by the Play Integrity API, and it's important to investigate how it could benefit your app's security. The Play Integrity API protects your apps and games from potentially risky and fraudulent interactions, allowing you to respond with appropriate actions to reduce attacks and abuse such as fraud, cheating, and unauthorized access. Our docs provide an easy way to get started with Play Integrity API, and if you're a current user of SafetyNet, you should follow the instructions to migrate your app to Play Integrity API. You'll find that implementing Play Integrity API is quite similar to how you've built your SafetyNet API solution. For advanced use cases, look at our docs on key attestation, which provide the full schema and more. We want to encourage you to always remember to design with security in mind and use our docs, guides, and code labs to improve your apps. Thanks, and happy coding. <laughs>